Karibu Gunyamsasa, where we talk to successful people about failure. So, we're in another episode of Sasa, and today we have a man who wears many, many hats. To some of us, he's a man who has made us laugh. To some of us, he's a man who is a brother, a mentor, um, a man who has mastered crowds. And, you know, I, I feel like calling him an MC is an understatement, so maybe a PHD ceremony. Um, a man who I consider to be one of the best marketing minds in Tanzania, although he doesn't practice marketing. Um, our guest today is Evan Spokoko. Cheers, Alicia. That was a serious intro, man. <laughs> I want that recording. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, man. Cheers. How are you, man? I'm good, man. Yeah? Evans, um, how old are you? I'm 47. You're 47? Yeah. Um, I've known you for a while. Um, it's hard f- f- and until up to this point it's hard for me to kind of be able to kind of pinpoint or even predict what kind of path you had growing up so um, could you paint me a picture uh, paint me a picture of how Evans grew up alright so Evans uh, grew up my dad used to work on the mines I was born in Shinyanga, though I'm from Bear. Stayed there for four years because of his work. He also met my mom in the same area. They got married. This is before my time, of course. Mm-hmm. That time, that was the only way at that time. Um, and then four years later, he was posted to uh, Britain, England. Okay. So I got there for an elder brother, Roy. He's now late. And a younger brother who's still there, and a younger sister, Anika, right? The singer. The singer, yeah. Yes. And so after that, it was like, I just, I pretty much just grew up there. Okay. Um, Which part? London, and studied in, in Kent, southeast, southeast England. Uh huh. Uh, stayed there, and then my dad was posted to, to Belgium. And then basically, we couldn't move because of Belgium, that part we, we went to spoke mostly Flemish. And he said, this will, What's Flemish? Is that English? Flemish is more... No, it ain't weird. It's very close to Dutch. Okay. But they speak it on the certain parts of uh, Belgium. Southern parts speak a little bit of French as well. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And so basically, it was like, ah, no, you guys just keep on studying there. Um, then it got to a point whereby the, basically the contract ended or he was now called back home. And so this was after I did GCSEs, which is O-levels. And so... We had no reason we were deported. <laughs> I thought it was a deportation. I'm like, hey, the whole my whole life is here. Yeah. Why are you guys <laughs> yeah. taking us back? How many years did you stay there? Twelve. Okay. Whoa, that's a long time. Yeah. So you grew up. Yeah. Okay. So I came back to Tanzania, then I had to grow up again. Everything was different. Yeah. All the luxuries were taken away immediately. It was mm-hmm. like a, I don't want to say prison term, but put it this way. The school that I went to, before coming back to Tanzania, in the morning, it was a boarding school. Mm-hmm. And b- black population, of course, was very small. We had like 16 black people in 420 white, uh, school of 420. So we were a minority, 3%. But I remember that there were four kinds of eggs every morning. Scrambled egg, boiled egg, poached egg, fried egg. For every, 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 every morning. Mm-hmm. Six months later, Nico Bongo, Semuja to the Smaganga. Iringa. There's no eggs. Ain't no bread. There's no uji. Uji. And uji, this is porridge. This is served at 11 mm. or 11.15. Mm. And last time you ate was at 6 in the evening. <laughs> what? You come to breakfast? That was breakfast. Breakfast was 11. Yeah. Okay. That was uji. Uh huh. Uji was a survival thing. Because mm. I, rem- I remember Uji because th- th- the difference was so stark. I now appreciate life because of that experience. Mm. I said, ish. Because Uji, there's different levels. Huh? There's Uji for poor people. Yeah. As in Uji, had no, no sugar, no nothing. They just mm. put salt in it just to have some taste. Yeah. And then there's Uji for people with a little bit of money and there's sugar. Mm. And there's Uji with another 
middle class mm. blue band you mm. put some yeah. yeah you mix it up yeah and what you know for <laughs> middle class is blue band bay. <laughs> <laughs> coffee so you know to fall asleep mm-hmm. <laughs> there's mandazi mandazi mm. <laughs> that was like the logo. luxury that was the first class mm. so uh, yeah I had the Ujus Kari sometimes if I'm lucky blue band but it was tough times mm. it was super tough times mm. so after that for me that was the biggest game changer I'd say uh-huh. because it happened so close it was six months it was like one life you're here Next life you're here, you don't know the language, you don't know the culture, yeah. you don't know the people. Yeah. Everyone that you know and understand is away. Right. And there's no interaction of day to day. Those days are snail mail, right? Right. You post a letter, my brother was still there because yeah. he was finishing his high school. Mm. And my ex, my my older brother and my and myself were saying, don't come back. Mm. Whatever you do, don't make the mistake of coming back. Wait, when you came back, we'll go and get from Gabia. 16. Well, we can get from five. From five. Oh, okay. Yeah. We ended up being in the same class, basically. <clears throat> mm. We were studying PCM. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You did PCM? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I almost did PCM. Okay. And then I said, no, let me do EGM. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's tough, man. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't choose. It's my dad. Because <laughs> he was... You uh, PCM. I'm like, okay. what are the options? Is that French? No, no, forget French. Okay. Because <laughs> good languages. Okay. I'm like, oh, PCM, okay. Because I was good. Physics and math. Mm. Chemistry was like, yeah. Mm. But physics and math was good. Mm. And so, uh, hey, long story short, that particular experience changed a lot of stuff. Come, came back home, our house wasn't complete. There were so many challenges. And I got used to a different way of living. And that kind of like, that hits you really fast. Because mm. everything that you're used to, everything is just stripped away. And now you're like, okay, so what are you going to do? Mm. <laughs> mm. Was, and so we learned to survive in school. Yeah. Learned to survive at home. Um, this, this was, these were the days when there was no landline. Mm. If you're lucky, you have a neighbor who's connected who has a line. Mm. You can go there and wait for a line, for someone to call in. Mm. It's a whole, it was a whole thing. Yeah. I kind of remember. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. That was the days where we had a TV, but there were no TV stations. Yeah. 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 And so that's real that in the best noise like the best noise they could hear at that time was the, 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 the tires of the TV trolley coming into the, yeah, we're gonna mm. watch TV. And the chances are you watch the same movie you watched before, mm. but just the experience like, woo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did watch the same movies a lot more. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it repeats. Yeah. You knew all the words. Yeah. People are watching movies going, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, yeah, yeah, it's ah, yeah. even worse. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it was, uh, it was that time. Mm. Um, and so then I uh, basically uh, finished A levels, and then the results weren't great. Yeah, terrible, flunked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We put in division three. Division three. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, flunked, man. Kabisa. It's O point O. I couldn't understand it though, because you know. Like physics alone, I was like, I got an, ex- we had an exam with like 60 students. I was number one. Mm. And so it, it's kind of confusing how that came about. And that kind of got me in a rut. Like my parents were like, so what can I do? I'm like, how is that even possible? Mm. And my brother wasn't studying and he got like a three or something. I'm like, how is that even possible? Because mm. I know I'm not. So I raised lots of questions. Do you want to follow up? My parents thought, okay, my, my aunt, who's also now late, um, she's based in Arusha. That time I was based in Bear. Mm. Said, okay, you know, you can just do something, uh, come through and maybe help me out because she was inspired by a story <laughs> that I did when I was in England. This is a very long word version. Okay. Uh, so in England, uh, on Sundays, students trying to buy their own food, boarding school students. It's usually crap food or relatively bad food. Okay. Because <laughs> it's subjective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened was uh, there's a guy who used to order Chinese food on behalf of students. Mm. Yeah, just take away. If you want to order some Chinese food, chicken chamen, egg fried rice, da 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 And then he brings it in and uh, you all try and get some kind of mafuta. Yeah, it comes in and then everyone, he gets distributed. He was doing it like as a service. Mm. And so I was curious. So I was following him around, see what he did. And then one day he wasn't around. And guys like, we need some food. Hey, Evans, you walk around. I'm like, oh, can you do it? I'm like, oh, okay. So I did the same thing. I figured out how to do it. And then finally he left school. And then 
I got to do it. Uh, but then, you know, I was making sure there's, there's a markup. <clears throat> and so at least there was some a bit of money coming in. Because mm. at home I was notorious for not bringing money. If I got pick up my pocket money, mm. it had to finish. Mm, mm, mm. I was like the Tanzanian government. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If the money's there, it has to be finished. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's a joke. Yeah. That's so, why they repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, after that, it's like um, a friend of mine called Greg, I remember him. Gregoire Ombour, uh, French guy. Uh, one day the Chinese guy comes through, we we pay him his money, he brings in the food from the taxi, and the guy says, you know, we're giving you so much money, so much business, because it's a weekend, every weekend. Mm -hmm. We're giving you so much business, you don't even give us discounts. And the guy says, okay, fine, I'll give you a discount if you order over 100 pounds of orders. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I can do that. I can get 100 pounds of what orders. What was an average order size? Uh, about two, two quid, two pounds, 15, okay. three pounds. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so like, oh, I can do that. No, cool. And uh, yeah, put it in. Uh, and so basically, but I kept on charging people for the fare, right? Mm -hmm. And then another time, he did the same thing. We go to your competitors. Same guy, Greg. He was just challenging this guy mm. for no, for, for I don't know why. Mm. He just felt like, it's a better deal. Mm. By the way, that same guy, yeah. he flies around on a private jet now. <laughs> Whoa. I swear. You guys are still in touch? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, next time around, we'll take, we'll take this business to our competitors. Okay, fine. No more. Fair. So, essentially, I was getting 10% discount. No fair. So, I was, you know, I was like making the money off that way. I was like, this is really cool. And so, um, so, so that means you had to get like, what, 50 orders? Yeah. To get to 100? It was possible. Okay. It was possible. Because even I used to get access to like the, the girls... Bueni. Okay. Yeah? Kona Shanganya. And guys say, oh, you going to the girls, Bueni? Hey, mm. listen. Pass her this note. I'm mm. like, and then, I'll just tell her that it's from me. And then, okay, I'll order some food. Okay. Yeah, that's what I forget about. Right? <laughs> yeah, so guys, we'll order some food. Mm. And yeah, so it was really, really nice. Most of the time, I, I wasn't ordering for myself. Mm. I was just ordering too. And so one day, I bought a radio, my first radio from a guy called Vishal Patel. Mm -hmm. I remember the first radio was 18 pounds. Mm -hmm. Eight, mm -hmm. 18 wow. pounds. Mm -hmm. And I was good at cricket. Mm -hmm. So I bought a cricket bat as well from mm -hmm. another uh, student who was living. Mm -hmm. Was this from money you made doing the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> legit. This was legit. And there's another guy yeah. uh, who used to... He's a big guy. Mm. Yeah, he's a big guy. And uh, he, he used to be too lazy to go to the tuck shop. Mm. We get all the sweets. Mm. Us Africans, we used to just... There's free bread and milk. We're like... Why go to the tuck shop? <laughs> With this bread and milk, yeah, woo! -hoo. Mm -hmm. So just have everything right there. In the this is of course Wulai. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this guy used to order the tuck shop chocolates, ice cream, etc. And he'd order it, and then I come back. I say, okay, you're fine. Um, he said, are you going to the tuck shop? I'm saying yes. He'd give me money, and then buy his stuff. Come back, and he'd give me the change. I'm like. Ding! Opportunity. Mm, mm, <laughs> so, mm. I'll be like, yo, want something from the shop? Mm, yeah, here mm, you go. Mm. And so basically, that becomes like a, some kind of side income. Like a hustle. Like a, a small hustle. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, okay, this is cool. So basically, I got back home one time. Yeah. And my parents said, we need to talk to you. And I said, hey, report. I thought it's definitely about reports. My dad only wanted to talk to us usually, but with a somber face. Mm. I'm like, what happened? He goes, now we know that uh, we give you money. Yeah? And uh, you don't usually return it, but this time you return. So we're asking, how are you returning this money? And where are you getting this stuff from? I was like, oh, what a relief. Yeah. So here's my story. <laughs> and then I told them what I told you. Right? Yeah. Why They're did like, you return the money though? Sorry? Why did you return it? Because my brother made me feel so bad. It's about, like, ah. about having money? Re returning money. Yeah. Because my parents are like, you never return money. And I'm like, okay, yeah. one day I'm going to return money. Uh -huh. so this is the money oh, because your brother used to return money. Especially my younger brother. My, brother, my younger brother, proper miser. <laughs> ah, wapi. <laughs> that was like, yeah, it's his it, own thing. Uh -huh. And so basically, that's what inspired. My mom told that story to my aunt. My aunt uh, was inspired by that story. She said, you can help me in, in various businesses in Arusha. So right. that's when I went. It's as simple as that. And so I got there. She connected me to some of her friends. And then my uncle, who I had not been in touch with, he used to live in Germany, came back. He had his own thing going. And then he connected me to a friend from Nairobi. And he had a contact at uh, 
uh, Farmer's Choice. Mm-hmm. And Farmer's Choice, the sausage company. Yeah. 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 So I, I sold sausages nice. for like six years. Nice. In Narusha. Yeah. Farmer's Choice Palace, Sakina Bale. No, that's Happy Sausages. That's Happy Sausages. Those are different. Yeah, that's a competition. So Farmer's Choice was coming from where? Nairobi? Nairobi, yeah. Okay, okay, Nairobi. okay, okay. Yeah. In fact, at one point, during the height of tension, those guys wanted to hire me. It's a German guy there. Yeah, yeah, it's a long story. So basically, Farmer's Choice is like um, this guy would bring the consignment to the border, uh-huh. and I'll take it on from the border, clear the consignment, bring it to Arusha, and expand the market, and basically just market my way through making this product available. Right. To the point whereby my name, I, I dubbed myself Mr. Sausage. Mr. Sausage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, what yeah. year was this? This was 90... By the time I dubbed myself, Mr. Sausage was like 97 or something. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh-huh. Interesting. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I just kept on growing and uh, it grew bigger and bigger to the point whereby we didn't have enough capital because we had to, you know, pay, pay cash up front. Uh, yeah, because we didn't have any rapport with these guys. Mm, so there was no consignment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I remember the first consignment came on my birthday, like I don't know how many years ago, like 95 or something, mm-hmm. and four, consign- four cartons. Uh, we didn't have a freezer at my aunt's place, mm. and I came through, I, I arrived like 4 a.m. Mm. So, uh, Arusha is cold, but by 7 I had to go and uh, find a friend of mine who had gained uh, a rapport with, Said, can you please take care of some of these goods? He, he had a shop while I distribute across Arusha. Yeah. There are four cartons. Mm. So I was using them Kokoteni. Mm. Right? Because mm. the tax was expensive. Yeah. Kokoteni, yeah. shop. Kokoteni, mm. shop. And it was mostly like what? Supermarkets <coughs> or like hotels? Supermarkets or? and small shops. And small shops. Initially, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eventually, it did pan out to, you know, bigger uh, outlets mm. and hotel chains, etc. cetera. Mm. Um, so by the time we got to, basically we didn't have enough credit. Mm. They said, you should get in line and in touch with the country agents. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And uh, the two guys who are partners, one was Uganda, one was Tanzanian. Mm-hmm. Um, that's Jacob and Daudi. Mm-hmm. Daudi, bless his soul, is late. Mm. Um, and Jacob, and they become basically my mentors. Mm. And that time I was still young. Yeah. So imagine this for me, like 95, I was still like 19. And so I've got this responsibility and I'm really just focused. But the truth is, my focus was on getting the hell out of the country. <laughs> that was my focus. <laughs> I was so Sepa. focused. Uh, I did not want to, I would ask anyone. I was like, uh, even initially, I wasn't even drinking. I was like, no, no chicks, nothing. I was just focused. Do this, do the work, do the time and get out of there. Mm-hmm. And go back to London? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. That time is only like three or four years. It was, mm. like it was still, you know, feasible. Mm. Um, but I kept on doing the business and it kept on growing, and expanding um, and through the partnership. And I learned so much from these two. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, they have different mindsets, you know. They, they, one was more, had more finesse, more communication skills, I don't know, more, uh, I'd say strategy. The other was more hustle, mm. uh, like more hands-on, mm. street smart. Mm-mm. And so I got so much, like the best of both worlds. Yeah. And I could see why the partnership worked so well. Mm. And it grew basically from there. Mm. So fast forward five years, by that time we have a cold room, a truck, nice. five employees. Nice. Uh, you know, and, I, and they've given me such freedom. So I even had like radio comms because Arusha, some, some places are terrible communication. Mm. And so we developed our own communication system mm-hmm. whereby we can just create own a SIM, by the way. Is it good? No, SIM is good, yeah. That time it was Mobitel. Mobitel, yes, 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 Mobitel. yes, yes. Yeah, we had phones. We had phones. Yes, yeah. When it comes to giving orders and stuff, mm. so we had to develop codes mm. and just in case we were intercepted. Mm-hmm. Okay? We develop codes as to, you know, you know, BVX1, BVX1. Okay, we, I know what that is. Mm. BVN, extra long, 100. Mm. So, we developed uh, solar orders yeah. from the cold room, etc. And uh-huh. so, we had a very good distribution system and schedule for our people. Mm. Yeah. And so, basically, up until that time is when, you know, things were working like that. And then for me, it got to a point whereby it wasn't really growing anymore. Because now, because even we're supplying even hotels, 
um, so the biggest hotel chains and stuff. But then it was like. Karibu Gunyam Sasa, where we talk to successful people about failure. You know, you get to a point whereby you've kind of hit a limit. Yeah, like, like a ceiling. What sorry. else is there? Yeah. Because I didn't want to just live in Arusha. First of all, I knew everyone. Arusha, Pakuba, Guinea Badogo. Asante. Mm-hmm. It was one of those places like, I'm like, this can't be happening every day. Mm. One day, I said, uh, my brother was also around at the time. Mm. And we sat there one day and we discovered that everyone who's driving, we knew everyone. Another you, you could tell a new car. It was like an old Western. Mm. You ain't from around here. Mm-hmm. And so we thought, mm, okay. Mm. Uh, so he went to Dar first. Yeah. And I, was, and I always come to Dar once in a while. And then I was like, that's where the head office was. Mm. And I said, Dar, I like Dar. Mm. Because that seems it's happening, it's yeah. challenging, it's busy, it's, it's busy it's up yeah. there. Mm. And so I had that in the back of my mind. Mm. And so they came to a point whereby I also got frustrated. I was trying to figure out another way out. And then I got hired by Farmer's Choice. Okay. Um, uh, in, the, in Kenya? In Nairobi, yeah. Uh-huh. It was a very brief stint. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was like a proper six-month vibe. Okay. <laughs> you actually went there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I went there like for like a, 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 like two-week training and everything. And then you were a rep in yeah. Tanzania. Okay. Yeah. It's very so, interesting how we actually have a lot in common. Yeah? Yeah. So growing up, um, my mom um, had a scholarship at Kanisani to go to my master's mm-hmm. uh, yeah, human rights law. So I had a scholarship. We were three boys. And we were all like young. I'm the I'm the young, I'm the youngest, but we were all relatively young. Kwa yaka tu beba wote. Kwa hiyo kuna kipindi kati ya dasa la tatu mpaka la sita. Um, I did my primary in the UK. Um, I was in Essex, I was in Colchester, and then after that, so she did her masters, and then she worked for a little bit, you know. Kati le kaka kula like almost four years, Evi. And then when it was time to come back. Uh, kakaitwa kwanza yeah akabaki gigule kwa sababu ganza alikuwa high school anakaribia kumaliza maliza ifike chuo mimi na kakaangu katikati pita tukarudi tukarudi bongo mm-hmm. and coming back the switch was huge now we didn't even stay 12 years it was only four but for a kid kwanza <laughs> kwanza nilitoka la sita badala kuingia la saba nikarudishwa la tano mm-hmm. yeah unajua kwa nilirudishwa la tano mm-hmm. sababu nilizo rais nani afu nikamtajia nyere <laughs> Kumele kwa mkafa, mse nilizingua. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, well, at least I was good in math and English, but everything else was a struggle. The re-education, yeah, the Malaysia mse, cyber. You know, mamze, mm. alafu. Yeah, there, was a, there was quite a change. And listening to you, now I, I can't help but wonder, even akwaje, um, mse se napokuwa amikanje, mm. afakirudi, it's almost as if sometime nakwaje jipanga hivi. Mm. Because when you come back, the change isn't just the education. The whole life changes, mm-hmm. like entirely. There was a time, I remember when we came back, we didn't have TV for like a whole year. I think that thing actually helped me lose interest in TV. I don't have a TV in my living room. It's just a thing. Um, one, because I think it kills conversation. But also I think because I was vaccinated <laughs> and I became immune to having to have a TV in the room for the room to be interesting to me. You know? Um, but... I can, not, with no shame, say we didn't have a TV because we probably couldn't afford one. Mm. You understand? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, even ah, It's almost as if they're surprised that they have to come back. Anyway, but the, the challenges with the school and the food being different, I can totally relate. Yani, it was so bro, interesting. Bro. Yani, it was so interesting. Bro, I don't know to do it. <laughs> and it's almost like and they're talking against a card game, card game. Kusugumo <laughs> maisha, <laughs> unagawa. <laughs> and you know the hardest thing, kwako unayaka adimushu like your ace, yeah, or your joker, yeah. Mambia, yeah. gali lo chacha, yeah, yeah. Should be kwanz, yeah. Because boko mia, mia. Eh, I say shule mi ni mechapa. Mi ni mesoma. Um, so in Liverpool ni soma shule moja ni tu mukido ma iko Arusha. Very famous school. I need a lot of us to mesoma mukido. Matu Arusha, we ingi sana tu mesoma mukido. Alafu, dara sala saba ni kajada kusoma. Because kwanza I'm gonna be curious about that. So mm. I made a lie about Mkidoma being a bad school. Ni kama shoku. Ni kena St. Mary's. Sisi ndo kwa tulikuwa dara sala saba ya kwanza St. Mary's. Bro, I think we were beaten into intelligence. 
kabisa <laughs> yani kama ulikuwa una akili mm. fresh you will maintain it kama ulikuwa huna una chapa mpaka ulikuwa na akili bro the only problem is yani ni akili ku kremisho flani hivi unajua yeah? because you don't want to survive yeah, yeah. yani and math for instance we used to have math exams at five o'clock every single day ilikuwa ni boarding 5 am 5 am so 5 am maswali ya 50 dakika 50 so la kwanza paka la tatu is the easy questions mm. kwa kila swali unalokosa fimbo hizi tatu alafu tafuna moja mpaka 50 kwa kila swali unalokosa fimbo hizi mbili so bishio 50 minutes kwa ile bidu kimbizi zile 30 brrr, afu pambane na zile 20 na mzee unachapwa hizo fimbo zote yani kwa mfano sasa mtu unasikia mzee ana 22 out of 50 mm. zote and the teacher is like hamna shida hamna shida no problem unasigawa over the day yani kama <laughs> kama <laughs> dozi kama dozi mzee <laughs> unapiga mzee 20 asubuhi pa 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 tenda kunywa chai ukirudi utapiga tena zingine 20 pa 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 afu mchana utamaliziwa na jioni utamaliziwa afu kesho asubuhi 5 o'clock another exam yeah no ma no no ma i i, I, I learned a lot in the way that education was approached yeah hiyo education in some regard naweza nikaelewa in some regard naweza nisielewe yeah because ukiangalia mazingira rasili mali zilizopo yani ya wengi from school ambao everyone had their own buns and bunna in science unajua yeah kwamba you doing all that you umesha polish zako hii ni magnesium hii ni nini hii ni phosphide hii ni hydrochloric acid hii ni nini kije bongo is one buns and bunna for the whole class yeah yeah yani ndio faida urefu pale yo mwaka ndio unaacha nini subi kwanza ni kuonyesha ndikwambia sasa mimi wonder ndio mwambie mtu story hiyo kwamba bana Bans and Bana tuko nao moja wanafunzi 60. Asema nyinyi mna bahati si kuna chorewa. This is the flame. The hottest part of the flame is blue. Hii na kwanga blue. Sasa wewe mbeda. Unajifunza Bans and Bana ubaoni. Mm. Ni kama ile jamaa alichora computer. Yeah. Yeah. Yani so I was like so the hardships I understand. Yeah. But the approach is different. Yeah, it's quite different. I was a very good language student and I remember the one time there a, a, a teacher came up to me. I was in we used to do sets a you know most developed most advanced most smart right and then d new the opposite side of the spectrum yeah and i was b set for french i remember and this comes to me uh, after class he says can i see you after class mm. he goes listen um you've done really well i'm going to push you to the a set you know mm-hmm. and i was like oh okay he goes yeah the choice is yours and uh, but tell me what you think and you know either you you stay on or you go to the a set mm. i was like hmm and then i thought no because the exams were like the this is the o level exams gcses were like the next term i said no point changing now to another teacher another environment didn't make sense to me and so i opted to stay i still got the a but i opted to stay but the, the fact that mtu na kuona and as soon as I reach iko sawa something's wrong and I wait baada ya kipindi to try and figure out akiona kama hakuelewi au hamuelewani he knows the teacher ambaye iko closer kwako wewe ataongea na yule teacher yeah kwamba ongea na Elisha i think something is not up because yeah. ni muona 1 2 3 na walimu wanasoma psychology yeah so they understand if there's something up you never yeah. know you're in the home kuna mambo mengi yanatokea yeah so what happens is maybe they so developed they, they have enough time and focus and then of course student to teacher ratio ni ndogo mm. yani wanafunzi 20 30 mm. kwa mali moja mm. 30 hiyo ni kubwa mm. kibongo bongo hiyo yeah. mimi nasema 60 nikwambia sio na bati 60 ni kwa 120 sisi mm. yani mpaka huitu jina lako wewe mm. una wewe mali moja dakika hii vipi majina 120 haikuita mm. bonge vipi yeah. wewe chupe mm. wewe masai yeah. <laughs> yani unaitu kwa Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the starkest difference that I discovered in the education process. Right. Especially mm. yeah, especially coming from a different environment. Mm. Um some of the methods work though. Yeah, I'm I mean I remember at the time um I got 98 out of 100 in math. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like it was really out of fear. Yeah, it out of fear. Was as if nafanya nectar ile naiona kanita. Anaweza kanizingua tena baada ya nectar kanikiza. Eh. Um, but the methods are very different and which is which comes to an interesting conversation where um you know um now we're a little bit older um i don't have any kids yet but i have friends who have kids mm. and they have a interesting conversation sometimes arguments about the transition again 
mm. kwa sababu kuna ile kwamba um mtoto akienda shule fanye kizungu sana anaweza ka out of reality kwa hiyo how do you and then akienda shule ambayo ni ngumu sana is unnecessary ugumu especially kama umeweza ku hustle so that they don't have to yeah. struggle you know what i mean um and then there's always these interesting balances where you kind of have to figure out how are you going to expose a kid to the right kind of environment so they learn how to think because i think that's the biggest difference hata hapa 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 tanzania some of the schools that are quote unquote international schools mm. some of them are actually really good schools no lie no lie they are really good schools and you can tell they're good schools because of the output yeah, yeah? Of the people that you meet later and then hata kama wote mmesoma idea wa fm kuna namna some of these schools help equip kids with the ability to think mm. sio kujibu swali yani ujue jinsi ya kufikiria na ndii na hicho ni kitu fani yani da I, I remember when I started um, looking for my first job you know you're out of uni and you know you're uko kwenye soko la ajira mm. and kulikuwa kuna namna fulani hivi kuna upendeleo watu walio soma shule za nje lakini kuna namna fulani hivi sasa hivi unaanza kuelewa why it's not because amesoma nje it's because jinsi vyo vya nje vinavyofundisha kuna namna fulani unafundishwa kufikiri critical thinking and not so much and critical thinking is about solving a problem it doesn't matter what the problem is it is yeah don't tell me about problems tell me about solutions find the answer to an extent whereby you you, you could be answering a question like a history question and where one is come show issue mwalimu akupatiki even if your history is wrong you know mm. and it is what it is um but i have a question for you so yeah a lot of us know you for comedy were you always funny i i knew i was funny at like 10 Okay, like a long time ago. I remember this because uh-huh. I I used to because uh, the people would react around me. I'd do things which were like uh things no one wouldn't do. Just silly stuff. And it would entertain people. So I knew I used to buy stuff even the little pocket money I had. I'd buy stuff for entertainment purposes. You know? I'd buy I don't know how to explain it. And I just buy s- stupid stuff. Okay? Uh you know my stick like bombs the, and the whatever magicians buy no no okay. stuff that would make people just entertain okay ah yes yeah, small toys and gimmicks and stuff okay um but i remember that that conversation could never really be had with my parents here i am being educated in, in england and i don't have it i'm like hey, what's what's your plan ah, the plan is this way hmm <laughs> and I can imagine where that was going mm. basically it just was for me it was like a non-starter okay so I remember it was just it was just a thing in my head and for us I used to see a stuff on TV and I could identify with it mm. and I said I like what this guy is doing here yeah and nowadays when I watch anything a movie series I sometimes know at verbatim the next line I know exactly what's going to be said And they said to the point whereby line. my ex was like, "You've seen this movie? I haven't seen it before. How did you know what it's gonna say?" I'm like, is this, "The setup is right. Is, you can tell where it's going, mm. and this is gonna be it." And she goes, "Ah, oh, no." I'm like, "No, I have never seen this movie before." Mm. And it happened again and again and again. Um, so I knew that I had that gift. I didn't know how to. The, in those days, they didn't really make it open that you know that there's money. It's something that you can create a career out of. Mm. And so that became the difficulty. Yeah. And so I kind of like, you know, let's play safe, get good grades, yeah. go to uni. Yeah. That. Yeah. Um can't blame them though. I mean the times <coughs> sorry. um the times are different. I I for instance I don't blame at all. And yeah. in fact, I'm thinking that sometimes even what you think you are afraid, but it's better you go out there and try than not try at all. Mm. Could be that your parents also saw something but they want you to be the first one to say it so it's not like them that put it on you right. and the later on things don't fall fall apart and, yeah. and they're like ah but you guys yeah, yeah precisely and yeah. mm. um, because after that later on in life they never they always supported me yeah what I wanted to do I was like it was just maybe in my head mm. and I didn't know how to you know put that question forward maybe but also parents do <laughs> ccts are surely 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. They may have to leave. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, like uh, out of school projects, etc. Yeah. You know, you can see when someone when someone's lights spark up. Yeah. And they the, that's the passion. That yeah. That's it. Yeah. You can say this this person this is what they're good at. Yeah. 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 And so for me, that's the you know it, it's a, it, it's a long journey. Mm. Yeah. But the process of of selling sausages helped me. Because I, I was branding myself. Okay. I used to be a pool player, right? Uh-huh. A kick-ass pool player. Uh-huh. Pool table. Pool table, yeah. Uh-huh. In Arusha, I was like, kick-ass, kick-ass. Uh-huh. Sandeep, cool. <clears throat> if you Sandeep, you could have to work Okay, 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 okay. How old are you, Naza? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, probably <clears throat> seven, eight. This was the area of like Vega. V- Vegas? Yeah, Vega. Vega. City of Sasa, Vega, you could Sandeep, you but those guys, and people got a cash, can you don't cross? And I'm going to get for Vega Pazuri, Pazuri, we're going to end it. Ah, but I remember it was the final, Mimina, no, semi final, Mina Mindy Mojib. Chumbejuk Ganika. Plus, why do you go? Why do you go? Yeah, it was like a competition. Uh-huh. And the, the winning prize was a TV. Nice. But uh, I was good at pool. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I used to, when I played pool, I wouldn't write Evans. I'd write Mr. Sausage because that was my branding. Mm. And I realized later on that, that was my like, branding mind. Mm. That who's Mr. Sausage? Because everyone would ask that question. Who is Sausage in the night? Mm. It's still of a sausage. Mm. And then by that, Mr. Sausage. Mm. Yeah. And then later on, I had a mobile kitchen and I called it Mr. Sausage. Mm. Yeah. So, so hot dogs and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And so I'd always tap those branding, those small activations mm. in res- in restaurants. And this is how you create a hot dog. Mm. This is how you can prepare a sausage. Mm-hmm. And so I realized that I was I was already doing below the line activations, mm. getting guys engaged with the brand, asking questions, knowing prices, knowing to find these things, purchasing on site. Mm. You know. So when I met up with the guys, you know, the clouds guys, Kusagas, family, and Nini. That's where I met them. I was selling sausages. Really? I said, you know, Lake Party Duluti. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. those Lake Party, we go on beach party. Uh-huh. I said, guys, yeah, beach in Arusha. So yeah. uh-huh. Lake Shore Beach for you. Uh-huh. So I said, can I sell sausages? Like, yeah, no problem. I'm like, cool. I'm gonna sell sausages. And so in there, and we had set up our own tent, and I used an apron, everything, like a proper chef's hat, and would sell our sausages, hot dogs, and everything. Mm. I think I've still got pictures. Mm. And um nice. And 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 that's how I got to know some of those families. I've still got some of the pictures from way back when. And so that allowed me to have the confidence that this actually works in terms of marketing, mm. but uh, but also meeting people. They're meeting you through the house. So I used to sell sausages in a nightclub. Mm. I never knew there was a lunchtime in Osiku. Mm. Have you had a lunchtime in Osiku? Cynthia. Yani, mm. I'm in a club. Mm. I remember it was Mawingu. Mm. Mawingu. Yeah. I've lost looking. two phones there. <laughs> <laughs> you had phones? Okay. Ah, ah, two phones, man. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, it's almost as if guys were mongi. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone came to our place, bought sausages, sausages, sausages. By the time we got to like 1 30, what about there? I was like, how is this? And it happened again and again. And the guys went to lunchtime, you sick. Mm. Guys just knew that they were hungry, they were peckish, mm. and just to continue eating so they can drink. Mm. So mm. I used to sell stuff. I'm about three, four in the morning. Mm. I'll be selling sausages, just hustling. Mm-hmm. And so for me, uh, that helped me discover myself in terms of some of the skill sets that I had. In, like using your charm through comedy and humor mm. to know more people but also pushing a brand forward so people, mem- you'll be memorable. Right. The experience will be memorable. It's a weird story. Yeah. Can I sell sausages? And she- yeah, but it wasn't comedy. Yeah. It wasn't public speaking. Mm. It was just the hustle. Mm. Mm. Okay, so when did the comedy actually become serious for you at least? The comedy began, uh, became serious in uh, 2009. Okay. A um, friend of mine was also in marketing. He was a marketing manager for a, a location, uh, which was owned at the time or managed at the time by uh, Carlos mm-hmm. from Smack Smacky, mm-hmm. who I also knew at the time. And he said, Hey, um, we're doing something. Why don't you come for? And that's Edwin. Mm. Edwin Ziba? Edwin Ziba. Yeah. yeah. He came and said, Hey, um, we're doing this. Comedy night. I was in comedy nights. I'm like, I think I met you? Edwin through you and Grace Matata, actually. Yeah. 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 And so he said, I come through, I'm like, you know what? 
I think it's time. You know why? Because since 2003, 2009, guys were telling me, you're funny, you should do comedy. You're funny, you should do comedy. But there was no one to do comedy. Mm. There was no club, no nothing. Mm. And, And so at this, this point, Tushami Ada. Karibu Kunye Msasa, where we talk to successful people about failure. In Shami Ada, okay. I came to die in 2001. Okay. In 2001. So I was in the... Uh, did some hustles here and there. Work for my uncle. I was, again, activations and uh, sold cars for a year. Yeah, nice. It's all a very interesting experience. It's a growth experience. Yeah, uh, I'm still in touch with those guys in Pagalao. Excuse me. So 2009. Uh-huh. Let's fast forward. Uh-huh. 2009. I'm already emceeing. So you should go emcee. Okay. Oh, um, so let's go emcee before. Yeah. Okay. For like what weddings or no 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 or? corporate gigs corporate gigs okay. yeah kazi yangu kwanza lucky moja cash <laughs> that was the first gig yeah lucky moja um so by 2009 yeah i said you know what let's just try by that time kidogo media media ilikuwa imeanza ku any internet and stuff uh. so we had access to videos and CDs or DVDs mm. yeah mm wa sani wa uchikishaje stand up comedians unajua mm-hmm. and so yeah. yeah and so got access to those and that time the girls was were hot yeah. were like chris rock yeah he was super hot that time mm-hmm. and so i listened to his stuff downloaded some of his stuff from online and zile kumbe like lime wire no lime wire was like a um, torrent It's a torrent. It's, a, it's like a U torrent. It's, it's a torrent. I don't think I knew how to download at that point yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. We were old school. Okay. Bwana, yeah. see. And my sister, Enika, and there's a friend Saganda, and a friend of mine called Bob Rich. Because they said, we can do this. Mm-hmm. So all four of us went. Because Bob Rich is a super funny guy. I believe that he's got such talent. And a friend of mine called Peter is also funny, mm-hmm. but he refuses to be funny as a comedian. Right. <laughs> But he's a hilarious guy. Okay. Um, and then Saganda, he's a guitarist. Mm-hmm. But he's, a, he's multi-talented. Mm-hmm. He's like a, he's, he's, he's like, was a, like a savant kind of, he can fit in anywhere. Okay. Um, but he's also really funny as well. Mm-hmm. Does lots of accents. Mm-hmm. Ah, do, did you see that? I remember the song. The guy who sang that song. I don't know Saganda. Fred Saganda. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, and I remember listening to that song and I was like, that's the guy. That's my guy. <laughs> so, went there. It was um, Malaika. Was it? Before it was Malaika. Uh, Malaika Beach. Sinangla Beach. Malaika. Mm. No, it was, it was Da Live. Da Live? Di Kule Mbagawa. No, Da or Alive. Da Alive. Yes. Okay. Da Alive. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Kafanya pale. Stage yake na yule kwa ni mkokoteni because the theme was like things found in Da. Okay. On the beach, on the coast. So mkokoteni kwa ndo stage na mapipa. Kasimama pale. Tukaanza ku deliver comedy. Yeah. <laughs> Did people, people didn't laugh? It was all wrong. Okay. Yani everyone was doing their own thing. We're getting to skirizi, we're getting to skirizi. We're on the beach. Sielewi. I'm like, how come it's not working? There's a table, it's open many apple. People are laughing. I'm like, are they laughing at the jokes or laughing at their own selves? To come out of the party. Yeah. When Zango is joke. I'm like, man, this is ridiculous. How come it's not working? They go, yeah, you know, I know. I'm like, no, 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 let's do this again. Again? Uh-uh, you do it. <laughs> Any, we can see my, we're funny ones. Mm. So basically, I, I went there, it was me, I see my. Wait, Enika does comedy? Did comedy? Yeah. I used to write a lot of stuff for her. Okay. And she'd do it through song. Okay. Yeah? Okay. My first time on a date with a Chinese guy. Mm. He had the nerve to take me out and buy me chips in my eye. But when... Yeah. Yeah. So I helped write that. So, yeah, she's she's funny. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I went the second time. Buy me chips in my eye. Okay. Yeah, but when I came to in the bills, when, when I asked him for the sword, Uh, I forgot the lyrics. But it's funny. He thought I wanted to go to bed and I say, no, walk out the door. Just turn around now. Anyway. Yeah. So, I went the second time. Uh-huh. 
So when you when you say you went, were you organizing the event or were you just going to? Well, I was like, yeah, I was like the content of the event. Okay. So they would organize the promotion. I'd come through and do the event. Okay. And so I came through, and I started talking. I had like a, I had like an hour rehearsed. Mm-hmm. Like, a, yeah, I can do an hour, mm-hmm. which is ridiculous. From your second gig, you wanted to do an hour? <laughs> it was stupid. But okay. everything was re- reverse. Okay. Because that's what I've that's what I've seen. Guys mm-hmm. are doing an hour. You yeah. haven't seen comedy clubs five minutes. When yeah, yeah. I'm like, I can't go there for five minutes. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I got this. I'll do this. I talk about this. At that time, I've got lots to talk about. Mm. Remember, I've come from a background. I've got a long story. I got there and I was getting tough within the last first 10, 15 minutes. I'm like, hey, this is tough. So what I did was I got off the Kokoteni. I started moving around. I said, must maybe it's one you had. Because also I had MC experience as well. And then my trouser split. This <laughs> is Comedy of errors. Mm-hmm. Comedic comedy of errors. And so someone gave me a kanga. So I'm moving around, walking around. There's a guy who looked at Kenny Rogers. Like, hey, Kenny Rogers in the house. It, it, was, it didn't work. Okay. Long story short. Mm. And so that was like after um, a month or something. Uh-huh. So uh, I think two months later, Someone said, hey, come and do comedy. I'm like, ah, you know, man, I don't know, man. It's a comedy thing. But how are you My, getting the gigs? Because we knew each other. Okay. And uh, might I say that time, I was also doing um, a, a project funded by the British Council mm-hmm. called Words and Pictures. Words and Pictures, uh-huh. So there's a, a colleague of mine, friend, Pakaleo, and it was Zavara. Mm. He was also really encouraging me. You should do... He, he's conscious. Oh, in fact, one of the founders of of uh, of hip hop, mm. uh, bongo hip hop in Tanzania, uh, from um, I was supposed to explain this. I can see explain this. Ne, he nasawa jina. Eh, like late ni- late nineties. Mm-hmm. D Rob, things, no, no. Yeah, wrong, wrong era. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you put the prop somewhere. I don't know why I'm forgetting the actual name of the group. Okay. But I'll get it. All right? Uh-huh. So basically, like, now you can do it. So we ran a program with the British Council for three years. Every month, there was uh, a festival where different art forms were kind of displayed. People who were young, up and coming. Okay. So whether so, it's music, mm, hip hop, mm, fine art, mm, graffiti, mm, 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 you know, major is, is a graffiti artist. Mm, so we, we all came together through this particular project. Mm, and so that time round, I got to know quite a few people. So Edwin went through the program as well, creative oh, entrepreneurship program. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, the third time, someone said, "Come and do a gig here, up, uh, no, you are one, two, three, four. I'm like, I don't know. And it was at Hugo Bark in Ondoni. Mm-hmm. but I did it. And I got there, the audience was like 20, 25. But it was all tightly packed and it was all focused on one focal point. Yes, the Hugo Believer. Yes. Yeah. And it was, uh, there's a Swahili blues, Leo Mkanya. He was doing his guitar and song. Mm-hmm. And then I went there and did my comedy. And for the first time, it worked. It was like a eureka moment. Mm. I'm like, aha! Because I was funny with my, my people. I made someone pee themselves. For real, for real. And she told me. I do I <laughs> uh-huh. That's what I'm like, yeah, man, I'm funny. Uh-huh. I'm funny. Uh-huh. <clears throat> but the issue was converting that, which is spontaneous, to something now you've planned. Something organized. Yes. Yeah. Like there's a script. And it felt so not me. Because I'm used to whipping. Like, but now this is like, oh, so I said that, that was funny. Now I have to repeat it and refine it and cut the words that made it so weird. Mm. But when I did that, and I did comedy there for like, I think it was 25 minutes, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, or maybe less. Mm. I don't know, I think it was like 30 minutes. And it worked. I'm like, I can do this. So what, what was different? Is it because of the crowd? The setup was different. Okay, there wasn't a the lot of focal noise. point was different. Mm. Comedy is like a cinema. Movie, to make a happen. There's no one chatting, 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 
everyone's focusing in one direction. Mm. Everyone's respecting the talent, the mm. art on stage. I say, yeah, when you're under camera, you're under camera. If I comedy, you will suffer. Yeah, you pay the attention. So all of this has been a learning curve and point for me to figure out, like, oh, comedy is a way of doing it. Mm. So after that, it became easier. And come December 2010. So this process took like a year to discover that. Okay. Like the comba this is now the right time to comedy. Okay. So come December 2010, mm. 20, uh, 2009 we did a first uh a first we did, come September December 2010 we did a first show Sweet Easy Oyster Bay and it worked. I said okay now it's going to work. Excellent. So two months later, we said this is going to be a monthly thing. Mm-hmm. So December, we did our first show on a Tuesday. Mm-hmm. On a Tuesday, that yeah. was bold. The only week in that value, like we'll bring you customers on a day that's really low for business. Yeah. And they'll spend, they'll have a good time. Yeah. And then we get the gate. You, you get, get the tickets, the, yeah. Yeah. And so they from then the on, it worked. Uh, success. Uh, and we did it for a whole year at that location. Mm-hmm. Then the location repurposed. It became like for only residential. We had to move. Mm. Went to Nyumbani Lounge, Kuala DJD. Lady JD, right? yes. Yeah. Mm. But that time also, I am about to get on to radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trace. This whole time, Badu, you have to be in game radio. Badu, you have to be in game. Okay. Wow. Well, beforehand, I had gone, I'd done bits and bits of radio. Okay. But I wasn't like a fixture. Okay. But this time around, like, uh, by the time I'm there with Lady JD, mm. the first year, 2000, 2012, I got into... FM. That's very interesting. You know, um, just to share an experience. Yeah. Um, um, back in 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, when I was organizing events and doing gigs, um, one thing that I think I did just once and then I never did again was play music at a bar. Really? Yeah. I, I, like I a DJ? Like, huh? Not, not a DJ, no. Like... So, you know, we would do gigs, right? Mm. Um, um, because at the time, one of the things that I didn't want to do mm. is wait to be called for a gig. I was like, I'm going to give myself work. And then oh. before it comes... It's so a- you were like busking? <laughs> yeah, I was doing my own gigs. Yeah, I was doing my own gigs. Yeah. So we'd organize concerts in Arusha, Nairobi, Evo. Um, and so when, you know, when people come to a concert, they're coming for the concert. Yes. So everything else is, a, is extra. You know, mm. the booze, the food, it's an add-on. extra. It's an mm. add-on. Versus in a bar... Yeah, you are very like tertiary. Yeah, and you're like very you're tertiary. Yeah. So, ili tulipataga moja, kumba, hey, wana na bayango de nini, nini, we're launching de nini, we'd like to have a band, we like live music. And we're like, but, ah, but the, then at the time, the music we were playing wasn't exactly mainstream. It's not exactly very high energy. So you kind of have to like this soul, R&B, jazzy stuff. Otherwise, you don't like it. And you know, what mm-hmm. I'm saying, the music is different. Nobody could hear it what it sounds like. Ah, yes, this is nice. It's classy. La, 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 la. Ah, it didn't work. It was terrible. And then from that day, we, like, I, may, at least me, I told my team, guys, at 20 gigs bar. Why? Because at the bar, you're the background noise. You really can't compete with the DJ, my guy. Your guy can do chicka chicka and change the song. Oh, my shanda, and you said, I mean, you said, I can't do the next song. Mm. Yeah, it's like, ah, no, no, no. And Evo, it's the same thing. Like a cinema. Mm. If people, and, and, and you know, like if people know what they're coming to do, they'll appreciate what they're getting at the place that they're getting it at. You know, that's why, for instance, when you look at like fast food joints, you go to KFC for chicken. You don't like their burger, pole. You don't like their salad, pole. It's not a salad joint. Mm. You know, you go for Subway for the bread and the meat, not the salad, you know. Um, but the, the, the good side about it is when the menu is short, people know exactly what they're getting. And this, it's a valuable exchange of money, services, and, you know, whatever value that is being generated at that point mm. in time. And when you are now fast forward, when you're thinking about products and sales and marketing and branding, essentially, that's knowing your audience. And then, you know, yeah, knowing your demographic, yeah. knowing the touch point, um, and knowing and being okay with the fact that for others who are not here right now, it's okay. You're not losing out. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Know your niche, understand, yeah. grab them, and yeah. they will through word of mouth and other, they'll, yeah. they'll yeah. pass on the message. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. So after the year, um, fast forward, was it a series of more comedy or was it a series of more comedy and I'm seeing before you got into radio? Or yeah, so going to radio as as a fixture now. 2012. I'd gotten into radio because I 
I, I wanted to, I've always wanted to do TV. For me, TV was the ultimate destination because that was always what I saw. And I've seen that. And the, unfortunately, the uptake for here, I find that people are very risk averse mm-hmm. when it comes to what to publish and broadcast. Okay. Um, but also, there's also the preparation aspect. As in, you can see the TV is there, but if you're not ready in terms of scripting, in terms of team, in terms of, you know, the whole production aspect, yeah, then again, the success is when opportunity meets readiness. Right. Yeah. Or luck is when success is when opportunity meets readiness. Yeah. yeah. One time, true story, I can die TV in Kazuma. Andrew TV. And I met up with the MD. Just my big pinnacle. I think you She's always been the MD. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he, ah, it's a iron lady. Yes, iron lady indeed. She goes, yes, but you know, you have to make sure, you know, um, whatever happens, uh, you know, you have to keep maintaining a level head. I'm like, don't worry, man. Because I remember my time in Arusha, that, that taught me. Because my, my time in Arusha, I was, I was known everywhere. So this is like, ah, this is how I did too. Uh, all you have to do now is bring me a script. I was like, okay. But in my mind, I was like, what the hell is a script? Because <laughs> I had like the idea. I, I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know the, the actual specificities of the technical aspects of production okay. that were required yeah. to make it happen. Yeah. Now it's completely different, of course. And now at least you have access. Then there's no YouTube, so you know, no tutorials are available. Even if YouTube was there, it, it wasn't even there. Yeah. So, yeah. So I was like, mm. YouTube is not as old as we feel it is. There you go. Could you use it too? So I said, I'll get back to you. Yeah. And so I got back and then I just, I ghosted. <laughs> so you never went back? She'll never forget it. I I'm going to I'm going to be a script, by the way. No, right, right now it's different. No, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be a script. Ah, no, no. Because what happens was, as soon as I joined uh, radio, yeah. Choice, Choice, the media group, I got access to Tengku to make uh, TV mm-hmm. and we put out scripts mm-hmm. and they did quite well, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then, also, unfortunately, it was the time whereby there's a changeover, analog to digital. So analog to digital, there's a massive issue, you know? Yeah. All the, all the decoders, psh, now I come to get digital here, yeah. <laughs> there's a problem. Yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, but um, it's been a, it's been a journey um, for me, the reawakening, because that, that was like for five years, mm. doing comedy once a month yeah. from 2010 to like 2015. Wow. And then we, it wasn't working out mm. and the TV was kind of like slow at the time for us. Mm. Um, that was the time of the transition now. Mm. Analog digital. Mm. And then kind of like took a break. I was like, I don't understand why this comedy thing is not working. I've been doing it for like six years. Fast forward 2019, I met up with a colleague of mine, a friend of mine from Arusha way back when, Ahmed, Ahmed Daha. Mm-hmm. Turns out that show about Nifanya Hugo, 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 yeah. Alikwepo. Yeah. Uh-huh. With his wife he was then dating. And we met up in between Hapa on projects. Mm. I remember Lume Challenge. Lume Challenge Lume Challenge I was a, I was a judge. Mm. Yeah. Okay. For two se- two seasons. Mm. Yeah. So we met up on that, you know. But we in and we kept in touch. But it's on and off. But those are the projects we met up. So 2019. This is fast forward, and we talked to happen a party. We should do something. We should do something. But we don't know quite what. And so go to a Rotary meeting. I'm a Rotarian. He's a Rotarian. Um, for those who don't know, it's uh, volunteers basically who. Changisha feather for the good of the community at large. So I said, this meeting, I knew a lot of guys who were there. We're like, we should do comedy as one of our fundraising gigs. Because mm. I know comedy. I have comedians I can work with. I have a following already. Mom, when I end up. So at the time, there were many ideas that floated. And comedy, those guys weren't latching too much. Yeah. And we're like, ah, man. Hey, maybe we should do it ourselves. So we established... Let's, let's do a show. My experience, his experience in logistics, making sure things happen one, two, three, four. Mm-hmm. That's his forte. Yeah. My forte is like the comedy. Right. The content. Mm-hmm. Curating. Yeah. This artist, this says for this long mm-hmm. period. Blah, blah, blah. And of course, some of the people already, I already know. And production. Since I, 
I was in rental business mm. for audio, visual, lighting, power, and communication. Okay. So the technical aspects of any event, mm. I've done to quite a high degree. Okay. So that I've got lots of knowledge in that regard. Is that a business you still do? No, no, no. Okay. No, I usually just focus on what I'm doing and that becomes the add-on value addition that I can add. So if, if I'm doing a wedding, I know that I'll provide a sound system and I know how to manage that sound system okay. well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if I'm doing an MC, I know that if anything goes wrong, I know where to start from. Okay. Or I know I, pros I can see a problem coming. Okay. I'm like, guys, you need a free smart TV. Just do a link up. Yeah. 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 So. Okay. Karibu okay. Kunyamsasa, where we talk to successful people about failure. So, um, that happened. First gig we did, success, sold out show. Second gig, sold out show. Third gig, made a company and we realized, okay, you know what? We're doing big gigs, but we need to do smaller gigs to build comics. Yeah. Or else other comics are not growing. Yeah. So instead of growing comics, like let's do like a, a show once in a while. Mm -hmm. And that time we went to Elements and they approached us and said, we want to do something like, well, we can do it. And it became like uh, every other Wednesday. Mm. Yeah, two Wednesdays a month, find a comedy show. Uh -huh. And it was really good. Uh -huh. It was very well received. Yeah. And we said, we can do this. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, what was it? Uh, then I think it was like a, the COVID outbreak vibe. Yeah, 2020. Yeah. Yeah. It was a bit of a breakup of cut. Mm -mm. And then we moved to another venue. We did like every Friday, mm. back to back. Mm. Friday, Friday, mm. Friday, 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 Friday. And then COVID part two came back. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah. And so, after that, we moved to other venues. We kept them moving around and getting customers and clients interested in what we're doing yeah. and maintaining and really fine-tuning our, our product. Mm -hmm. And so, over four years, we've done, I don't know, close to 300 shows. Whoa. We've done workshops, like over 30 workshops. Yeah. We've had artists come from about 15 different countries wow. to perform on our stages. Mm. Um, and so it, the the product has really, really grown yeah. and matured. Yeah. And we've also matured as individuals, right. as artists. Right. Um, he's also gone onto the stage. He's also done lots of comedy. Yeah. He's done stage time. Yeah, I didn't know he did comedy too. Yeah, he challenged himself. Okay. He loves challenging himself. Nice. He challenged himself like, I can do it. I'm like, but why? <laughs> I'm the comic. You're the ops guy. Why, why are you going into this? He goes, no, it's important that even the artists know that it's possible. Mm. And let me be a living example. Okay. I'm like, okay, it's cool. And so, yeah. And so, having grown like that, it's, it, it, it grew me in so many ways. Mm. You get to communicate better. You have to be very fluent. Radio taught me a lot on right. how to pace yourself, mm. how to change your cadence accordingly, yeah. how to really get, you know, my rental business allowed me how to figure out how to use the microphone, you know, to develop an intimate relationship with this tool right here. Right. And when I did a, a workshop mm. and I'm telling these guys there's one part we just focus on technical. Mm. Like the microphone, the stand, mm. um, understanding how to do a sound check, okay. understanding the importance of talking to your sound, your technicians mm. who bring the best out of you mm. to the audience. So mic control and sound. Everything, yeah. anything technical. Uh, and of course, the stage, but the, there's a part where we just focus on anything technical, clickers, kidogo, yeah. when you're presenting, yeah. just so they get an understanding of tools, yeah. wireless, handheld microphones, and then of course, wired mic cable, gooseneck microphones, stuff like this, there's a condenser mic. So all of these things, yeah. you're teaching these guys. Yeah. And seeing them fast forward, one guy who'd never been on stage in 2019, mm. before we did our first show, He'd never been on stage. Mm. This year, we went with him to Cape Town and he's performing to South Africans. Is this there? No, this oh. is uh, Hamis Mde. Hamis Mde? Okay, is that Hamis Mde? Hamis no, Hamis. No, Hamis is Mobeto. Okay, yes. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? What? No. no. Uh, Hamis Mde. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I miss him there, so... He, and he was well-received. <laughs> Sorry, I miss you, but that's not a terrible comparison. Yeah, it's not. It's not mm. Yeah, completely different. <laughs> um, so, I've seen the growth. I'm so blessed to witness it. Because I'm saying, I wish this was here 
when I was there. But then in hindsight, I'm saying, no, it was the right time. Yeah. God's timing is the right timing. Right, right. Because, but were it not for uh, an easy way for me to grow, who would know where this particular industry would be? Right. Who would be the one to grow it? Mm. How long would it take? Yeah. yeah. I've done comedy searches, Chief. I don't know if you remember C2C. No. What is C2C? It used to be a, a, a TV station. Yeah, I'm just C2C. C2C? C2C. Oh, sorry, I'm going to turn on Okay. <laughs> so, C2C was like a, a TV station, but it was up and coming. It was a, it was a small TV station. Okay. And um, I was creative consultant. And so I did lots of test projects there. Okay. One of the projects actually was um, was Nyota uh, was C2C, finding the next presenter, next best presenter. So Zamaradi came from there. Zamaradi Mkatema. Okay. Uh, Ray Mshana mm -hmm. is now with Safi. Mm -hmm. uh, Amri Masare, mm -hmm. sports commentator, is mm -hmm. on with Radio Online TV. Mm -hmm. um, who else was the fourth one? There's the fourth one. So they all became like In they, did, they did very well. Yeah. Who's the fourth one? She didn't know what I'm And so when I was there, I remember doing the comedy search. Yeah. So I was looking for stand-up comedy. Right. But I was like, no, let's do a comedy show, a TV show. It doesn't matter who it is. Uh -huh. And what year was this? What year was this? It was this like 2007. Okay. What me Yeah. And then there's a comedy search after the comedy left uh, East Africa. Yeah. Went to TBC. Yeah. Now there's a comedy. They're looking for a new brand. Yeah. That's where I met Pepe. Logo Pepe, yeah. 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 And he, no longer Logo. Well, yeah. <laughs> He's got two kids now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Pepe. Just Pepe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, he did a special last year, by the way. I saw. Yeah. I, I haven't seen the special, but yeah. I saw like the ads. He's proper grown. And so uh, I did that comedy search. That's very interesting. So you were doing all these comedy work, but you hadn't done your own. You, you were doing this before 2009, 10, when you did your first show. But that comedy search, I think that was just before I started doing my own show. Cinderella? Yeah. Okay. It's very interesting. Or just as I was doing it. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Uh, and then I did two more comedy searches um, in 2015-16. Yeah. That's where I met Dale. Yeah. He won one. Yeah. And there's another uh, good man. He also won another one. Nice. And I met uh, Humphrey um, MC Kisoli. MC Kisoli. He was also there. Nice. And so it's interesting. Nice. How the comedy journey is taking me. I've met up with these guys. Yeah. But the journey's been growing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You've got such an interesting story. With somebody with... With somebody with a story like yours, um, I can only imagine there's been this roller coaster of experiences, roller coaster of emotions. Um, looking back, can you think of one particular experience that um, was a turning point in your life? Or to be more specific, can you think of a particular failure that was a turning point in your life? I would say my exam results. Mm. I couldn't believe those results. Okay. And at so many points in time, I said, I'm going to contest these results. Why didn't you? The process of actually going to Dar es Salaam and then when the street next time, and then you have to go back and you will stay where in the, in the process. I just thought, this is ridiculous. Yeah. I'm like, how could I fail that dismally? I couldn't understand. Mm. I, I, I really, to oh, date, yeah. I have a question mark. Okay. But that is almost like it caused me to say, let me prove you that I'm not stupid. And, I'm sh and uh, even in school, I was, I said, how can that be? And so I made it my, 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 my mission that time. I'm going to, whatever happens, it will happen. And so I was fortunate by, by 21, I had my own place. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, the 21 I had my own place. So, continuously challenging, continually challenging myself mm. um, and not allowing someone else to set your narrative for me has been key. Mm. The most, the other most important part for me has been to complete yourself or to complete, complete I call your cycle in life, you must mentor so we all live in a cycle. Right. 
So no wazaliwa, and then unaenda hivi. You get to your peak. At the peak, you must prepare succession. Mm. So by the time it troughs, you have somebody, the seed you're talking about in the beginning, right. to now take over and sprout. Right. And you will take over and m- mentor them. You know how this, oneka matayili mbele ya miti, until it gets strong, mm. and then it breaks out of the tire. Yeah. So basically, you want to be able to mentor people enough to the point whereby they can grow whilst you are waning, mm. and your time is waning. Mm. All right? Yeah. And so I want to complete a cycle and want to live a full life knowing that I've lived life in its completeness, but I've also made sure that I've taken people and they've grown to a potential that allows them to, you know, do what they can. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're not expecting anything in return. Yeah. And that's why the, the company that we formed with Ahmed is called Punchline Africa. Yeah. And the vision is to become the mecca of stand-up comedy in Africa. Mm, and the partnership process is has been a big part of that. We can't do that alone. Yeah, We've partnered up with Punchline Comedy Club Nairobi, who've also invested. So there's time, money, blood, sweat, tears that have gone into that. Mm. People don't understand it because mm. they think it's like that. But the truth is, you're taking someone to Nairobi, that becomes an inspirational story through social media to hundreds, maybe thousands of people who also want to have that journey, who wants, who believe that they have what it takes. Yeah. And it could be the next superstar mm. of comedy in Tanzania. Mm. You go from two to save Pengine. Yeah. You never know. You never know. That's right? true. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. the whole point is, usiishi kwa kufikiri kwa mwendo, utakuwa. Ishi kwa kwamba mungu mekupo wezo, yeah. jenga daraja. Yeah. Musa kufika the promised land. That's very true. But alivushu angapi? I don't know, but it, it, from the story, it sounds like a lot. Is a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 what I'm, so what I'm saying is, the, if I go back, is maybe that time whereby I'm like, okay, so what? Now I'm a failure? I'm not a failure. How could this possibly be? And my parents said, you know what? Maybe change the environment. Um, allow him to go to one to with aunt, my aunt was in Arusha, right. closer to Nairobi, right. Nairobi access. So you know, so for me, I'm tra- I'm following the trajectory, right. and I'm seeing this opportunity. Right. I'm thinking, wow. So it comes through blessings. I can't say it was me. You can never say it was you. Mm. It's always a com- the combination of factors okay. that allow you to be who you are. Mm. Anyone who says self-made is likely to be adding a lot of salt or omitting a lot of the truth. Right. Yeah. Because sometimes you just happen to be fortunately born where you are. Yeah. If you were born 100 miles to the east or west, it, was it could be a whole different story. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you were born in a slightly lesser income, it might be a whole different story. A whole different story. So I think it's important to understand where these blessings come from. Yeah. Accept what it is, but don't accept it as a fin- finality. Accept that that's what you have. Yeah. Now build upon that. Work with it. Yeah. So you you refused failure basically completely. I still refuse. I still refuse. Mm. I'm still pushing. I still believe there's so much that can be done. Yeah. But you have to be in an environment. Now yeah. we can travel, or now we can travel through 5G technology. Uh-huh. You can you you out there. People can see you from different parts of the world. Right. Um, your stories will get told, get known. Um, but it doesn't have to end there. Yeah. There are so many angles that you can plant various seeds. Uh, for the betterment of humanity, mm. for the betterment of your own community, mm. that's why I also joined the Rotary. Mm. Like, you know, there must be something else I can do that I can see where it's coming, that I can see where the money is going straight to the project. And I like that for that. So, so. When, when you think about failure, a lot of us fear failure because we fear the judgment that comes post-failure. Um, and, you know, that comes with, you know, criticism sometimes to self, sometimes from people around you, sometimes from people who love you mm-hmm. because they're the closest and they're the ones who can actually hurt you. Yeah. Um, is that something you ever had to experience? And if you, if it was, you know, how 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 do you how do you tackle that? Bro, I was afraid to talk on the microphone. I was when I was hustling selling sausages during Nanane, you know, grounds and Nanana Russia. Yeah, Blinjira. So I had a banda there for those eight days, ten days, and selling sausages, hot dogs, getting the culture in. Uh, you have to sell, of course, beers and stuff, you know, alcohol, beverages, and soda, etc. And so my uncle, my late uncle, um, Uncle Steve, so he was a maestro. He's one of those guys who had the gift of gab. He can sit in front of people he doesn't know, cab drivers, boda bodas. I left him once, I was heading to the office. 
I came back after 15 minutes. He has people around him listening to his story. He does not know any of them. I was like, man, that's a gift. Yeah. So, one day we're there and he's talking. Hey guys, you don't know who's running this banda? And I heard that. I'm like, eh? yeah, to Kunyese. Yeah, to Kunyese. Of what? What to Ara? I said, I said, to Mona, I said, I said, I went and hid behind the freezer. I swear, I kid you not. I remember this story. I can see it in my head. The kind of the feature knew my freezer. You remember the money? He said, pointed towards me. Yeah. I said, this is terrible. So the Kaibu cave. I went to the to the to the to the stage, and I didn't know how to use a microphone. So he was, was like, talking on a microphone. It was a microphone. He was talking on the mic. Yeah, and then he gave me the mic. Okay. Introduce yourself. Tell okay. us what this is about. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I do not know. I said, I said, I said, I had to go ski. Our guys have been drinking. It's yeah. like 10 o'clock. Yeah. What kind of going to say, ma? Huh? How about ski? Then I started panicking. Yeah. Like they were attacking me. Now, I fast forward that incident to many years later. I can speak comfortably and confidently in front of royalty and presidents. That for me was a turnaround. Like, mm. it wasn't easy. Yeah. But I remember where it came from. Mm. So moving forward, I'm like, that's why I'm going to, I'm starting a class, Kabisa. I'm like, guys must know. I started HAP. Yeah. If I started there, me now go back Kabisa. Yeah. Where yeah. are you? Yeah. If you just need the right yeah. tutor the right platform yeah. and you get there. That's why I'm saying the story of Amis. Yeah. Never been on stage. Yeah. Four years later, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I, 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 um, I, I, I was lucky enough to join a, a, a music academy. Yeah. Um, this is between the age of 19, 20. <laughs> um, and I did the first audition. Was that TBF? That was in TPF. Okay. Uh, by the way, most people don't know TPF when I got into was the third time I was trying TPF. Really? Yeah, because nerves. Like I get so nervous, I forget the song. Oh, man. Kabisan. I forget the song. Kabisan. TPF was interesting because Marakwanza. Marakwanza Likuja Arusha. Alafu. Mind you, hey, you sing it for breakfast, for lunch, and dinner. Una ogea, una lala, iyo. Fika pale mze, na mkuta Ian, si na mkuta na nani, na nani. Bro, forgot, sang something else. And then, bada hapo, nika mindi, kasababu, ilikuwa Arusha da, afu Nairobi. It's like, Arusha Nairobi, sikaribu. Nairobi, you're the same, yeah? Mm. Like, and Nairobi, and then Ian's something. He's like, you again. Okay. Same thing happened. Nerves, I forgot. Second year, same thing happened. I forgot. Third year, Ikaleto da. But maybe it was also God's plan because I wasn't 21 yet. So I was lying to be 21, but I wasn't 21. Mm. Uh, third year, I was actually above 21. Um, do, do and then I auditioned in front of Banana Zora. No, mm -hmm. Babaki Banana Zora. Um, and... I got in. And then I went to Nairobi. Um, and then I auditioned the first time and I kind of sucked. <laughs> but he gave me a second chance. He's like, man, I've seen you too many times. Do you want to try again? I was like, yeah, I want to try again. Let me try again. Let me try again. Let me try again. <laughs> and then I got in. And then, yeah, it happened. Oh, nice. Yeah, but what's interesting is Kipindi Hisho Hisho, all that nerves. Mm. Um, the first time I actually did an audition, um, it was for a music academy, Nature Sauti Academy. It's in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, it was basically where the home of Sauti Soul is. Mm. That's where those guys were groomed. And mentorship is such a big part in people's lives. If you're lucky enough to find somebody who gives a fuck, mm. um, hold on to them, you know? Um, and I, I auditioned there behind the door. So he was, there's this lady, Mzongo Neto Natalie, God bless her. Um, and this other guy who was a vocal coach. And same thing, um, maybe even worse. Like I couldn't like even speak because I was a very shy kid. Mm. Um, but even shyer about exp expression and because you have to be vulnerable when you're doing creative work. Yes. 
And being vulnerable to strangers is, hey, especially strangers who are there to judge you, not to listen. This is not like, like walking around game. naked. It's, in deal. it's like walking around well, naked. Well, yeah, well, like exposed well, 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 Um So, ah, they were so kind. They're like, hey, do you want to, do you want to turn around? I was like, uh, I don't know, isn't it weird? She's like, okay, so so what do you want? Do you want to go behind the door? I was like, yeah, I want to go behind the door. Is no way. Like, yeah. Wow. And I auditioned. Tana kipindi hicho ilikuwa nyimbo gani? Tana kumbuka ni nyimbo ni audition. Kama kunenenenenenda kisumu. Listen to that song. I got into that academy. And then the academy also helped me get into TPF. I think so very much. Wow. Yeah. I don't think I became a better vocalist. I did become better with confidence. Mm. Yeah. But they had somebody had to let me audition behind a door. Karibu kwenye msasa. Where we talk to successful people about failure. To actually it's almost like unashusha ba hapa. Yeah. Unashusha zaidi. Kwa mbele ngo kwamba allow them first of all to get the confidence. Yeah. Ikuruka hapa. Yeah. And then just take the raise the bar slowly high. Yeah. I I like that. That also takes patience. Yeah. And experience. Yeah. You they 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 like for instance Natalie is truly like a teacher and mm. you have to be a teacher. A teacher by any kama mzazi. She wants you to win. She wants you to win. Um so even the challenge is not so you fail mm. and like nectar. The challenge is so <laughs> you actually <laughs> learn and grow up. Um um uh, before we move on to something else I want to ask you something. Yeah. Um You've done a lot of things, a lot of different grinds you've done. Um, you've been a car salesman. That's interesting. I didn't know that. You've sold sausages, Mr. Sausage. Mm. Um, I've sold, sold cars. Cakes. You've sold cakes. Uh, you sell content now. You sell yourself mm. as a brand, et cetera, et cetera. Um, can you give me three businesses that you would never do? Knowing everything you know now about business and yeah, yeah. as an individual, yeah. Well, number one is illegal business. That's mm-hmm. number one. Uh, number two is a business that requires me to be there, like repetitive business. I'll give you an example. I said, no offense to those who are selling that kind of business. Who's a spare karyako? I don't like the process of repetition. Yani mimi hapa I'd be all about trying to pimp it up. Yani I can't be there and just sell the same. Yeah. There has to be an element that changes. Mm. Yani you'd feel we you tell that it's a different job mm. within three months. Mm. Yeah, cuz I used to sell cars mm. and <sighs> it was just like you say on a desk, you wait for a client to come in. I was like, man, this is boring. Yeah. I'm a guy of monkey mind. So I'm always like So I used to do other stuff yeah. which didn't concern me. Yeah. I remember going to the spare parts department and doing tours understanding what they do, how long it takes, asking yeah. all those questions. Yeah. I went to the sales department, I went to marketing as in just trying to get my mind busy and figuring out like why does it take so long to do this? And then I changed the systems in terms of cuz they they sell via Japanese yen. Yeah. But then there's also the USD and T shilling mm-hmm. uh factor. Uh-huh. So I created a system whereby Someone would just type in today's rate and everything would change yeah. for the whole thing. So you can easily just quote yeah. immediately. Yeah. And so, yeah, so for me, that's, that's one of my biggest takeaways. Mm-hmm. Like they, they just change how you... So that's one of the businesses I wouldn't do. Um, but you know, for me, I say never say never. Okay. And right now we've seen that people are doing businesses in a different way. Right. I can be an investor yeah. in a business I'm still doing that business as an investor okay. by proxy. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know. For me I'd always be challenging the ways and means that you can do business, mm. make it more effective, yeah. make it more lucrative, mm-hmm. make it more creative, yeah. make it more impactful. Mm. That's what I'd go be going for. Mm. So I wouldn't say never as never, yeah, but, but illegal business, yeah. that's the one that's like nah, never man. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever tried? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, okay. As, 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 have I? No, I haven't. Okay, 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 okay. Is it Naripa? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Have you ever tried? <laughs> oh, actually, yeah, I have. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's for another episode. It's most stint during uni, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't for me. Yeah. I'm glad you realized. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I realized it. My parents were like, mm, I don't think I'd survive in jail. Yeah. Yeah. In <laughs> jail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't make it. I don't want to find out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get teasing in this 
Wewe oh, unapiga gani? Eh, kisa mimi nikapiga. Wewe tunapiga nani ya studio? <laughs> Sisi tulingia, tulingia ile uzito challenge. Uzito challenge. Tulingia kwenye studio. Eh. Kana kushindana. Eh, yeah, yeah, wakati mnafanya ile eh, kwamba kwamba at least front toning and then lakini baada ya toning kuna a, a regimen ya diet. Yeah. No, no? Yeah. Ili mambo yabadilike. Yeah. Si ndio? Mm. Ili si kwamba yani una shit kwenye toning, diet plus also sleep. Yeah. Mental health. Yeah like in even lifestyle yeah that was the whole campaign behind like uzito challenge uzito challenge yeah like ni muona kwa muonekano ni uzito na toning unaona mm ah, that's very interesting we were looking for a challenge today really yeah for a campaign related to um living a healthy fulfilling life bro you do you know so are you comedy yeah. and angalega watu ambao wanakuja kwenye comedy na waangaliage na kina nani wanakujaga na kwa nini wanakuja i try and ask myself because yeah. wewe sikujua saa zote yeah. saa zingine mtu kuja peke yake mwingine kuja na mwingine mwingine kuja kama group lakini kuna kuna aweni kiafya yani afya ya akili stress za maisha people drink sometimes mtu anadrink because anajua kule na kuelekea atahitaji msaada wa ziada afu hazi kusali <laughs> ameoa <laughs> Bro, I should put a bill in gini. Mm. Nikienda kwa kwa wife pale. Mm. Yaani? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Ziko to Fauti. Mm. Kwa ngeta leo na fikiri zangu na Bobby na Chris. Asimi mimi asimneska mimi hapa niko nyamsiba kwa sasa. Niko kitu nachikisha. Nikasema hivi wewe kwa nini unafikiri hicho kitu? Sasa imekuja yenyewe automatic. Acha niandike. Lakini yani because I don't know maybe ndio Mungu akaweka style hiyo kwamba ni it's a way of relieving stress. Mental stress unajua haionekani kwa mtu inaonekana kwa vitendo. Mm. Taratibu mtu anaendesha ovyo ovyo unaweza mtukana. Mm. Lakini unasema mm, sijika huyu na anapitia mengine. Mm. Kwa right now I'm like uh, I appreciate those who come out and talk about these things. Nimeona sasa hivi wazungu wana yani ni kawaida sana kuongea na therapist. Yeah. Yani ni jambo la kawaida sana. Mm. Yani wao hawakopeshi. Yeah. Sisi Mm. kuongea na therapist ni kwanza changamoto na afu ngarama pili kuongea na mshikaji naye ujue anatoa siri kiasi gani ujue na maana eh, kwa hiyo ongea na mdomo unaweza kusema misri yangu bana ujue mimi na mungu wangu <laughs> i talked to a therapist for the first time last year kweli yeah did it help no <laughs> was it one time or going in it was a couple of times ilikuwa kama four times if and mbongo Miss you going a lady yeah older like much older like maybe 50s even uh-huh. um but this is what happened kwanza it was a learning experience that there's very many different ways to think about challenges and problems mm. um and there's also scientific ways to think about challenges and problems mm. from a psychology standpoint um i did marketing and psychology chuani Uh, like the, when I was doing psychology I was doing psychology to understand how people think yeah. I wasn't thinking about how to solve problems as much anyway nili 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 appreciate the experience kwamba oh yani unaongea na mtu kuhusu kitu fulani afu yeye anakuonyesha vitu hivi and they connect um it i think um with therapy though because you're talking to someone mm. you kind of have to connect somehow because when you connect and you can trust and then when you can trust you can be vulnerable absolutely um i don't know whose fault it was you niake yangu but that connection didn't happen mm. so i stopped yeah but i didn't stop because i didn't think it wasn't working yeah to an extent where by right now if you tell me that i need therapy for the first time i like you think okay why do you think i need therapy mm. but not from why do you think i need therapy it's just like why do you think i need therapy and i'm very open to it mm. so i'm so open i would support somebody else open heartedly to go to therapy. Yeah. 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 You know same yeah. here. Yeah. And you know kibongo bongo sometimes uh, we're afraid that our professionals uh wana haribu baadhi ya sehemu. Mm. As in 
that thing is confidential. Yeah. Kuna miko fulani ambayo inapaswa sivukwe. Yeah. I put this some, sometimes in my jokes, but it's from observation. As a comic, my I just observe stuff and then I realize like you can be watching the news in a bar. Na kaa na ngoti TV. Leo melazo zani. Afu mtu kupembeni yako umemsalimia tu kidogo. Umjui ni nani? Anasikia? Mm, hiyo gout lazima ingemsumbua tu. I'm like kwa nini nimekuomba uniambie yeah 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 I'm like kwa ah me juma yangu yafikia kwa daktari pale I'm like eh eh juma na mtu afanya operation nje ya nchi kwa sababu kibongo bongo ah yeah kuna na nafani hivi ya tuamini yani yeah yeah so um we have a segment of the show that's called injia boxi mm um and injia boxi is very literal in the meaning <laughs> um Um, in in today's injia boxing we want to talk about public speaking um for many of us it's a common experience tangu shuleni um mkiweka kwenye makundi mkipewa group assignments um kila mtu anatega mzee kwenda kufanya presentation uh tena yani kwa mfano kama ukitokea kuna yule mmoja ambaye yeye hana uoga yeye anaweza kufanya kazi yoyote ile zake wafanye kazi alafu yeye ndo akaenda kufanya presentation as somebody who does it for a living um What are your thoughts about public speaking and can you give us some nuggets of knowledge? Um practice it won't make perfect but it will make better. Mm. Pili you have to get good at selling in life because you're selling any time you might be selling to your family kwamba una pitch wazo hili unahitaji watu wapate buy in kwamba kiwanja hiki kitumike kufanya moja mbili tatu nne but the way you do it there's a way where you can be more compelling there's another way you can be more like i don't know if we can trust you so there are ways ambazo you can apply the knowledge of speaking mbele hadhara Uh, ambayo itakuwa na tija zaidi kwako kingine ni kazini everyone's always pitching for something everyone wants to get a better pay get a promotion get recognized get the opportunities to go and study and improve themselves nje official nje nchi whatever sasa so, so you're selling yourself you know hata kama unasema kwamba me i've got a young cousin brother and for guys same moja wakati anaanza kazi mwambie sikiza don't be like everyone else you need to stand out weka manguzo yani kama kwenye 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 kigoda migumi tatu mm. we ni mguu mmoja yani usiku ukiwa haupo watu wanaisikia mm-hmm. mtu ambaye amenena likizo amekaa siku wiki kuna wiki mbili mtu ashutuki kwamba alikuwa likizo it's a problem yeah. it means wewe hauko na huo uzito mkubwa yeah. hata kama organization iko efficient kasi gani there must be your personal touch yeah i'm like what time do you report to work 8 go at 7 not 7:45 7:30 7 o'clock do this be a team player no no find out more about issues nje ya himaya ambao unaifanyia kazi study about kama uko ndani ya it study sales mm. no no mm. get a general overview don't be so you're always selling yeah. yourself so kipindi ambacho umepata nafasi kuongea na MD, CEO mkubwa, line manager, lazima kuna njia ambayo anasema that's an interesting individual. Itakusaidia. Yeah. In a relationship yeah. to your partner. Mm. No no. Yeah. Wewe una you're very compelled kwamba nataka tuende huko. Yeye unajua kabisa kwamba yeye hana buy-in. Now you have to figure out how to get the buy-in. Bila kutumia mimi na bells and whistles. Yeah. Bells and whistles unajua eh uh, utampeleka same out you were excited at mandio because of excitement yeah. but moyo je sema ndio mm. mwili ndio umesema ndio mm-hmm. but you kweli kwa moyo bado una wasiwasi mm. so viongozi wana siasa they always looking to sell jamani karibuni hata hii mambo ya t-shirts na nini is marketing sawa but we've seen before mtu anachukua t-shirt yako anachukua kanga ambao umeileta anachukua na kofia afa na kaa nyumbani siku uchaguzi 
haujauza mm. so you have to be good at selling you have to be good at selling yeah no no you don't have to be super excellent kama inspirational speakers ambao na kaa mbele watu wa 80 na wange nao no but enough to kwamba you have a point you have something to say of substance yeah. now how do frame how to communicate mm. tena kwa kutumia your whole body not just maneno yeah content ya maneno ni asimia ndogo sana ya communication mm. kuna cadence ambayo ni tone yako ambayo unaitumia your body language how you gesticulate kama kutumia mkono everything about you is communicating ni tone ni kuja kujest gesticulation gesticulation unavyofanya hivi yani kuna mtu mwingine ukitaka kumwangalia mtu wewe zima tu sauti afu muangalie anapo anaongea eh au asiviongea sometimes yeah. sometimes you yeah. can yeah, you, actually it's the majority of communication yeah. is non verbal non verbal yeah non verbal yeah. verbal communication yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. i'm sure even hata watu wa police na wengine wanafundishwa kabisa kwamba muongo utajua kwa style hizi hapa yeah. yani bila hata kuongea unajua was was yeah. question mark yeah. so i think kikubwa ni kwamba you need it in life upande wa to convince people to move to your side so you can achieve your vision but also help them achieve theirs mm. kingine is it can be applied in so many different ways so hii mfano wa nyumbani mm-hmm. kuleta amani nyumbani mtu ambaye anataka kuongea umesema siku hiyo kwamba you have two ears one mouth right mm-hmm. eh yeah. yeah and bila umskivu zaidi ndio yeah. Because when you listen in, you can dial in to what matters to them. Yes. So salesman or saleswoman, ni kwamba anasikiza kwanza mteja anahitaji nini, yeah. afa na kaa na tafakari, yeah. and then anaweza akaanza kuleta muundo mzuri wa strategy itakayo saidia yeye kumfikia huyu kwa point ambayo huyu anaelewa. Ndio ndio ndio. Eh, yeah. lakini ukiwa kwamba wewe kama jamaa wale ambasquizo on the tenant. Habari yako? Inaitwa John. Ninaitwa na uso hii hapa. Kwa leo unapata mbili. Ukisoma mbili unapata moja. Hii hapa moja ni kwa promotion. Una mbili unapata kwa bure. Hapo lakini wewe ndo. Wewe ni kusubu tembee au? Sisi wote kama zamani. Sasa nikasema nikasema dada kwanza anza upya. Si sketch shot ni sema. Anza upya. I I swear because sometimes hata wale wanapokea simu customer care sometimes Yeah. Because when I audio message ile ile mara nyingi. Yeah. Hello Brian, can I transfer you? Sasa mzee 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 Amen. Hey. Uh, yeah, ni kama yani 5G. Let's get over it. Yeah. yeah. So I think um So it's important to understand mm. all the benefits of such a communication capacity. Yeah. 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 So for instance, clearly public speaking or yeah, co- public speaking communication is key. How does one become good at public speaking? Are there any like you know, tips, tricks, hacks? Okay, one of the things is actually one listen to yourself chukua video ya wewe ukiongea ukiwa unaongea na wenzako au ukiwa unaongea labda uko kazini una presentation unafanya chukua audio yake peke yake bila hata visual alafu sikiliza audio utagundua mengi kuhusu jinsi unavyoongea kuna mimi nasema uh, mara nyingi uh, na nini there's a, a, an organization called toastmasters kumbe wale jamaa I've been invited for a few meetings. They count the number of times you have the ums and ers. Eh eh mimi kama mimi eh nadhani kwamba nani eh wana hesabu. Wafu kwambia ulikuwa na ums, his ers, his. Kumbe it makes a difference. Yeah. Overall in your speech. Ila kwa sababu unafanya kidogo kidogo. Yeah. Unaongeza vile una una hakika na watu kifanya nini? Yeah. Imagine pilot. Yeah. When they get. Mm. So Julie. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now flying above the uh, we'll be flying at 40,000 feet above sea level. The temperature in Copenhagen right now is uh, around 20 degrees Celsius. 
Habis mana? Uh, hello. Ah, we. Rasa kau pada. Hmm. Hujah mana? Siapa kau? Kau rasa ni? So, listen to yourself, yeah. but also see yourself bila audio. Fanya vice versa. Kau yo sauti kata, afangle video pekek lagi. Uta gundua. Siapa ni? Kira sana fanya ifi. Kira sana fanya ifi. Aina ratija. Yeah. Uh, as uh, I'm a comedian, so what kind of mentorship of comedians? Uh, there's also this thing. I'm being compared to me a stage visuri. People are pacing for the wrong reasons. I'm not a bad dude. Mimi, come on, Mimi. I'm not a bad dude. Why are you not so good? Come be so nervous. So people sense that easily, and they become distracted. Right. Come be so nervous. 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 Inasumbua. Yeah. So there are certain things ambazo nimejifunza kwamba you have to figure out first of all what your natural voice is. People want to talk to a human being. Yeah. By the way, MCs wengi. Wana sauti ya MC na watangazaji wengi. Wana sauti ya mtangazaji. Uh, Ni kiripoti kutoka hapa uh, tukio katikati ya uh, uwanja mzuri kabisa mwanja mwanana. Nani anatumia neno mwanana? Yaani ni wewe fikiria ni mwanana. Mwanana? Mwanana. Mwanana kabisa. Ulimwengu maridhawa kabisa wa shughuli yetu hii ambayo it just smells fake. Yeah. People can spot that a mile away. Yeah. Usikose. Kwa mara nyingine tena uzinduse. Yaani yeah. Yaani that thing that boat has sailed. Yeah. So I think people sense truth and the inverse side is they sense bullshit yeah if you want to sell and someone says it's bullshit you're not going to sell mm. it's as simple as that mm. because you know when you're selling i guess most of the time people buy you before they buy whatever it is that you sell deal yeah because if you're confident and you ooze confidence they become confident in what you're doing and saying and as a result you know they trust they listen yeah you can have the weirdest voice but because you confidently communicating it. Yeah. Ndio sema ndio sauti yake. Yeah. Naona? Karibu kwenye msasa where we talk to successful people about failure. So the same vibe like all presenters nini kwamba that voice. Yeah. Eh? Ni kiripoti kutoka and like no that's not your voice. Mwambia ni kiripoti kutoka hapa katikati ya viwanja vya nane nane Dar es Salaam. Mimi ni flani flani na utakaa nje. All of us like who in my mind yeah yeah so i think that uh, the the communication or the, the essence of truth mm. coming through you in a in a skik kwam to okay so record yourself so you can critique yourself yeah visually and and then listen to yourself and then see yourself without the audio in a saidia mm. mm. is there anything else um apart from practice somebody may say masana because that's the one thing about unapata ugumu kufanya na by the way uh, consistency or discipline nidham mm. practicing is everything you know you're an artist mm. Mm. to get good at the strings on the guitar mm. requires consistent mm. like when you practice mm. lazima ukose when you kose uta note utajabu fanya upya utarekebisha back to it's the same circle same circle in a, in a, in a rudia to hivi and then as time goes on the circle basically becomes smaller and smaller as the the adjustment time becomes less and less mpaka ina perfect that process yeah kwamba i know i know what i have to do yeah. and you still practice yeah. like in the process becomes sure process yeah. the part and parcel of the performance yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. very interesting um public speaking isn't just for general public right like it no. doesn't have to be a big crowd it can be no. a crowd of one bro i've done a comedy show about the the, the people in the audience were the comics <laughs> yeah Oh, yeah. tripata wageni mwingine alikuwa ni mmoja. Mm. One paying audience member. Yeah. I remember when in flames. I remember, I won't forget. Yeah. But you have to be able to communicate to that individual. Yeah. When there are many. Yeah. And a, a good example is a wedding. So you basically go into the question I was thinking now sometimes it's an audience of one and sometimes it's an audience of many. Do the same principles apply and also how do you communicate in ways where everybody feels like you're talking to them? Oh uh, yeah um we, we, kuna kipindi fulani nilisikia sana kwamba imagine everybody's naked au <laughs> waangalie hapa so it looks like you're looking at there unajua 
this one might help a little bit uh-huh. initially come out on aibu yeah imagine everyone naked depends on who you looking at um to bomb i say it might deter you yeah but i'd say have a conversation fanya kama unaongea na mtu mmoja even in radio tunafundisha kwamba fanya kama unaongea na mtu mmoja si ndasema nyinyi nasema wewe anayesikiliza anahisi kwamba naongea na yeye the song is the most powerful and asma you lakini we is come on get you lot uh, you come on you yeah huh? how many times do i have to tell you asma i'm gonna me man yeah you got that that feeling yeah um to bigger audiences nimegundua uh ndi fire concert moja nazi moja ya bure watu zaidi ya 20 kwa 25 watu wapende kusikiliza mziki wa asili wanapenda zaidi mziki wa kisasa bongo flavor hip hop na kadhalika na ndio maana mziki hiyo ya asili huwa natangulia <laughs> nazo mwanzo eh yeah. hey, bwana hey, i want to get to a point bye bye this is a side side note tanzania mziki wa asili unapigwa mwisho kama ndio highlight yeah i want to get to the point but Amen. watu ukasema wao yeah, toka 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 sasa mimi nikaingia kati pale kumbe jamani anajua nikona kuna ru, chupe karushwa hivi mimi ka, quick reflex nikadaka hivi kucheki nikona hii rangi si ya maji <laughs> yani jamaa si kufanya nini hizo chupa yani jamaa uko serious mm-hmm. sasa nao kuongea hapa ni najua na ngea kile gani wameingia free vijana wengi wanaume ndio asimia 90 na ni kama wao ni flani hivi vijana so now you have to figure out their language wewe mwana wewe wewe ah wewe afu wewe bwana nimekuona hapo nimekuona ah usijifiche nimekuona wewe mse wewe njoo wewe njoo kwanza njoo pila like he i'm with him shikaji hebu tuone itakavyokuwa but i was equipped with knowledge kwamba i have the microphone i don't pass power to anyone i have it unaona wewe unamkubali nani msanii gani hapo wewe asili yako ni wapi mimi mbonga kumwambia mimi hapa ana google search mwenyewe wewe unataka kufanya nini wewe mimi mimi mtu Arusha Arusha pakubwa chief and a good search yeah Arusha na ngena yetu alimrobe mimi eh mimi kama mimi yeye hapo natafuta hapo kama wewe unataka kufanya nini ile ene ya preempt unajua bongo atuambi hivi umwambie kwa hiyo nyumbani ni wapi ah mimi kwetu ni Masai ah unafahamu Oldonyo Orok Oldonyo Lengai Oldonyo Sambo eh loliondo nakujua kwa hiyo kule ukienda kule unajifanya kama sio wa kabila lako sio ile ukija hapa ni wa mjini yani unaanza kumpeleka but only after experience hasa wengine wanaanza kujiuliza na mimi mtu wa wapi makasika niuliza na mimi so i use even in comedy kumbe i like what you saying i believe you have a very good point but i believe also that you are embarrassed of your own culture that's him doing unamvua ile Uh, arrogance mm. so there are, that comes with experience yeah no no mm. ujamwaibisha mtu mmoja kwa moja mm. lakini umempeleka sehemu ambapo yeye yeah, anashindwa kurusha ngumi mm. umemfunga mikono mm. asiye yeah, kisha kuwa mfano mm. na ameitwa pale akajua kama ni mzuka yeah anatoka pale na heshima mm. ile bwana anakupa mara moja hebu tuma salamu kwa mshikaji ambaye yuko hapa kwa hebu ah wanangu wa wa camp flani wewe mimi mnatisha sana memories the cause yeah. what to me fry like in message sent i love that respect the vibe yeah how's it yeah so yeah. basically know who you're talking to when you have the mic you have the power mm. i think that's that's a very big takeaway for me it is when and you know i i remember i don't remember if it was a book i read or a podcast i listened to ilikuwa analizea kwa nini stage iko juu it's because you let if people are looking up at you you are the star Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's psychological. It's a, a loading effect. It's LAUD is loading, yes. yes. loading effect yes. Yes. Messiah flan yes, 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 yes. So you have the power, you have the mic. Know your audience. Um you have to learn how to sell mm. in any way possible. Um in life, in life. Mm. Um you have to um practice because practice makes better. Practice doesn't make perfect. Yeah? So perfect doesn't exist as a standalone <laughs> concept. Okay, yeah? perfect doesn't exist as a standalone concept. Um and there's one more lesson which is 
I think know your stuff is most important. Know what you're The talking. content of what you're doing yeah. can always be improved, tweaked, adjusted. So the content, people are, are here for the content right. of your words. Yeah. And so they can die. You, you continually, yes, yeah. preparing, not going off script, yeah. off the cuff. Yeah. Some people do well like that. I'm not saying everyone does that. Yeah. Some people do well like, I know what I'm going to say. If I have to go off script, I'm comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to know. Yeah. Especially if it's technical. Yeah. You can't be like brushing things aside and someone comes through and you don't know your stuff. Yeah. No. Nah. That goes back to confidence because mm. also when you know your stuff, you're confident. And when you're confident, you inspire confidence. And there you confidence go. Confidence inspires trust. Trust inspires agreeability. And even being vulnerable, by the way. Yeah. That you don't know everything. Yeah. You're like, excuse me, what is it? I am really not sure what is what yeah. exactly is that. Uh, They're like, oh no, it's like, oh, is that a thing? Yeah. Now you become the yeah. interviewer. Yeah. Yeah. So that says that, that shows you're human. Yeah. You know, you can't. No one knows it. No, who knows everything? Yeah. Nobody. Not yeah. Everybody. So yeah. it's like you're also human. Yeah. You know, but on the on the basics, you should know your basics. Yeah. You should have all your basics covered. Yeah. He's in Guinea, Gomba. Is that a new thing? Ah, oh, you haven't heard. Because that's where you get information, right? Mm. I'm like, wow, that's so interesting. Mm. So does it work like this? No, 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 no. Usually you have to do one, two, three, four, and then all of a sudden you get it. Yeah. But public speaking, and I, I've realized that uh, I've, I've done a, a few courses of some elements of stand-up comedy, the Venn diagram, there's an overlap with stand-up, with uh, public speaking. Because mm -hmm. with stand-up comedy, You're speaking to an audience. With stand-up comedy, you use a stage, you use a microphone. You have people answering back. So for someone public speaking, there's also Q&A, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can get defensive. Sometimes you're not in the mood. Sometimes you're just off. But whenever you're, someone's speaking to you and you're protecting a brand or a, a vision, you can't afford to have a waiver because that would be communicated like, mm, this guy doesn't know what they're... Yeah. We've seen a recent example of a permanent secretary. Yeah. She got pissed off. Someone had a piece of paper that should have been kept under wraps. That's like behind the scenes vibes. She's like, sent. In her mind, she'd be like, oh, you're going to get it later. <laughs> she forgot to put the pause here. <laughs> yeah. But um, all these things require control. Yeah. There are certain things you will hear that are very hard to hear. Politicians get this a lot. Mm. And leaders get this a lot. Guys, tell me what you really think. Hey! And then they tell you what Usually it's, it's very quiet until one person speaks up. After that, everybody opens up. Okay. <laughs> then people just start talking. And then you realize, like, I didn't realize people are so unhappy. Yeah. I didn't realize. No one told me. They shielded me from this. Why did they shield me? Because it's just been, it's like, a, it's like a wound that's been festering. And you don't, I didn't know. No, no. So I've been out of touch, basically. And so I think it's important you, 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 you get to understand what your mission is, but understand how people feel and be vulnerable. Allow yourself to get used to getting that. Yeah. Because Kibongo bongo apa, kuna ishikamo, someone could be a boss, but they're younger than you. You end up crouching. I'm like, you know that that can encourage a culture of of uh, the multiple standards. Yeah. Because you're not saying the truth like ah, it's just come on, be a nice fool, guys. Yeah. But it's not. Just be honest. We're having honest Fridays. Yeah. Tell me what you think. Be honest, and by the way. So and so already told me she hates this idea because of this. She told you that? So be it. <laughs> Guys will start opening up. Yeah. Sometimes they want to be validated, but sometimes they really have great points. And it's good for you to understand both. Yeah. Yeah. It gives you insight into their character and into how people generally feel about the issue. Evans, this has been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. It's been very therapeutic for me as well. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It feels... It feels like a very, 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 very good lesson that will be lifelong. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Santa Santa. Cheers, man. All right. Cheers. 